children how are you how has been your week how is home how is school i hope you're well and that you're in good health i hope you had a good week welcome to today's lesson let's pray as we begin let's pray father lord we thank you for yet another day to learn together from your word but also for every good thing you've been giving us for the gift of life for protection for safety for provision and for all the good things you've been doing for us lord we thank you we also pray that you bless us as we hear from your word speak to us and give us understanding by your holy spirit and help us live according to your word for the glory of your name in jesus name i pray it. amen amen all right um like I said earlier, I hope you're well. It's good to be with you again. And if Talia is watching, hi Talia, because the other time you said I don't get you. So hi Talia. And hi everyone. Today we have another lesson. We are in a new month. Do you know which month it is? April, yes. Um, and we are entering the Easter season. So Today we are looking at a lesson titled, The Triumphal Entry. The Triumphal Entry. And this lesson comes from Luke chapter 19, verse 28 to 40. Luke chapter 19, verse 28 to 40, The Triumphal Entry. Other people call it The Triumphant Entry. Anyhow, let's get into it because today is Palm Sunday and we remember Jesus entering Jerusalem. So we are going to look at that, what happened and why is it important for us today? Why are we even listening to this story? Let's get into that. And before we, I tell you what, we, what I want us to remember or our learning point today, I want us to think as usual. So if you have a neighbor, you can tell them the answer. Or if not, you can just think about it, think about some answers. If you have somewhere to write, write a few things down. Meanwhile, I hope you have your Bible, your notebook, and your pen with you so that you can note something down. All right, here is what to think about. What do you believe about Jesus? I assume you've heard about Jesus, you know about him. What do you believe about him? Can you say one or two things you believe about him? And how do these things affect your daily life? How does what you believe affect your daily life? Because what we believe affects how we respond to different situations. Okay, that's one way to go. Another way is, another thing to think about is, have you ever been in a situation where people got the same information but came to different conclusions about it or responded differently about it? A situation where people got the same information but their response was different. Have you been in a situation like that? If so, what was it? Um, situations like this are very common. So let me give you an example. You're in class, for example, and the teacher says, stop talking. Everybody hears that. Some people will keep quiet. Some people will continue talking. Or someone says, stand up. 
Some people might stand immediately, others stand after, others wait to be told again. Oh, I don't know, different things, but people listen to the same thing and they come up with different conclusions and so respond differently to the same information. In the story we are looking at today, we have that kind of scenario. And we are going to look at that shortly. But before we go into that, this is what I want us to remember from this lesson. I want us to remember that Jesus is God's promised king. But not all people praise him as they should. We should praise him as we should. Jesus is God's promised king, but not all people praise him as they should. We should praise him as we should. Okay. So Luke chapter 19, verse 28 to 40. Let's get into the story. I'm going to read. I hope your Bibles are open so that you follow along. I'm going to read from an NIV Bible. Here is a background to what I'm reading. We've been taking time in the book of Mark. We looked at Jesus' ministry, how it started, John preparing the way for him. Then Jesus came and started preaching and teaching and healing people. And all the people who were around saw him. They saw what he did. They heard what he said. And they came to different conclusions about him. So what we are reading is the last starts the last week of Jesus' life on earth before he died. So the beginning of that week, the last week of his life, this is what we are reading. At this point, Jesus has taught, he has healed, he has preached. People know about him, he has crowds following him. Now, what do all these people who have been around him conclude about him? So, Luke chapter, where are we? Uh, Luke chapter 19, from verse 28. I'm reading. Jesus had just been teaching about the parable of the ten talents. Um, in the story that we are looking at, he had just been teaching the, about the parable of the ten talents. When he started his way to Jerusalem, he would end up, he would not come out of Jerusalem. That was the last week of his life. So after teaching, verse 28, after Jesus had said this about, about the parable, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached, approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Verse 32. Those who were who sent ahead went and found it just as he told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. Verse 37. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Okay, that's the Bible reading. Let me briefly retell the story. Jesus has been teaching, preaching, healing. He has a crowd following him. He's making his way to Jerusalem. And he sends two of his disciples to get him a colt. A colt is like a baby donkey. <laughs> the name of a baby donkey is a colt. 
he sends his disciples to get him a coat, which no one has ever ridden. And he even tells them exactly where to find it, what the owner will say, how everything is going to happen. And everything happens exactly the way he said. Because Jesus is God, he knows everything. Yeah? And he has authority. So they bring it and they put their clothes on it and they start, um, they put Jesus on it and they spread their cloaks on the, on the path where the colt is going to pass. Then as he goes down the Mount of Olives, the people start joyfully praising him, praising God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen Jesus doing. They praise God and they say, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And they, I think in other um, gospels, they say they wave branches, they were praising God, they put clothes on the way and they were welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem. And some of the teachers of the land, Pharisees, saw this and there. They told Jesus, teacher, tell your people to keep quiet. Rebuke your disciples. And Jesus tells them, if I tell them to do so, the stones will cry out. But what's going on here? In the Old Testament, way back, you know how everything that's happening with Jesus was already talked about way, way back, like over 500 years before? In Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, there is a prophecy about this whole thing that's happening. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, in the good news says, Rejoice, rejoice, people, in Zion, people of Zion. Shout for joy, you people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He comes triumphant and victorious, but humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. So these people have been seeing Jesus teaching, they've seen his miracles, they've seen what he has been doing. And they remember something Jesus said, uh, what that was written in the past, that your king would come riding on a fall, the, on a call to the fall of a donkey. So when people see this, they're like, yes, this is the king that was talked about. So they lay their coats on the floor, they lay their coats on the donkey, and they, they put Jesus on it, and they start praising God for all the things they've seen Jesus doing. And they say, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. They're like, yes, this is the king that was talked about. We've, we read about it, but we've also seen all the things he has been doing, and they praise God, they praise God in loud voices. They're actually fulfilling the prophecy. But there's another group of people there with them, the teachers of the land, the Pharisees. And for them, they're like, no, this, no, he's not the king, please. No, 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 no. And they in fact tell Jesus, teacher, tell your disciples to keep quiet, rebuke them. It's like, first of all, they don't think he's a king. They just, th they think he's a teacher. He's just a teacher. And they don't think he should be praised. And they don't want him to be praised. They tell Jesus, tell these people to keep quiet. And these people think Jesus is a king. So much so that, you know how a king gets like the red carpet and they, on the side, I don't know, to pay respect for him. That's what they were doing for Jesus because they were treating him as a king. But these people, the Pharisees were like, no, he's not a king. So, the disciples and the crowd believed that Jesus is the king. So two groups of people, the disciples and the crowd, they're like, this is the king. The Pharisees and teachers of the law are like, no, he's not the king. And what they believe influences what they do. So the people who think he's the king lay their cloaks on the ground, put their cloaks on the cold, praise Jesus and sing for him and praise God as he's entering Jerusalem. Those who think he's not the king, he's just a teacher, they're thinking, no. In fact, tell the people who are praising you to stop. And the question for us is, what do we believe about Jesus? Do we believe he's the king? And will we praise him like those people did as they were recording? As he was entering Jerusalem, will we praise him? 
Or do we think he's just a teacher, like the teachers of the law? And we are thinking, no, he's just a teacher, no more human being like us. Yes, he's important, but he's just a normal human being. So no need to praise him. In fact, everybody who's praising him should keep quiet. What do you believe about Jesus? They had access to the same information. They had all read the prophecies. At least the teachers of the law had knew what was in Zechariah. They can't pretend to not have known because these are the things they teach the people. <clears throat> but also they have seen, they've been around when Jesus is teaching, healing, preaching. They've all seen all these things. So they have the same information. But one group praises Jesus and one group says, no, he's just a teacher, we shouldn't praise him. So remember the learning point I was talking about was saying Jesus is God's promised king, but not all people praise him as they should. Back then, not everyone praised him as they were supposed to. And even today, not everyone praises Jesus or believes in him or follows him as they should. But that does not change that he is God's promised king. So the question for us today is, are we going to praise him as we should? And what is praising him anyway? Is that just singing songs to him when we are at church and when you think of a song? Or can we do more than just that when we are praising him? Can our lives every day be lived in such a way that everything we do causes people around us to praise him, but also brings praise to his name? So praising Jesus would not just be just singing songs or being at church or praying, but doing things in such a way that they bring praise to God. Taking us back to our question, what do you believe about Jesus and how are you going to respond to him? Will you praise him like the people did when they were welcoming him in Jerusalem? Oh, are you going to say, mm, yeah, he's just an ordinary man who many people talk about, maybe a great man who lived long ago. Or is he God's promised king and we should praise him and sing praises to him but live in such a way that also our lives praise him. What we do when we're at home, when we're at school, how we interact with our teachers, our brothers and sisters, our parents, everything we do, we can do everything in our lives in such a way that it brings praise to him and praise to god because jesus is worthy of praise he's good he came to save us every good thing we have comes from him so he is worthy of our praise so this week as we start out and head to, out to easter remember to live your life as praise to jesus sing praise to him Say prayers of praise to him, but also live in such a way that brings praise to him. So I'm hoping that our point makes sense to you, that Jesus is God's promised king, but not all people praise him as they should. We should praise him with our lives and everything that we are doing. Our memory verse comes from part of the passage that we just read, and that's Luke chapter 19, verse... 38, the words that people were saying as they praised God when Jesus was entering Jerusalem. And these words are, God bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory to God. Can you say the memory verse together? Starting from Luke, 1, 2, 3 we go. Luke chapter 19 verse 38, God bless the king who comes in in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven, and glory to God. I'm hoping this has made sense and that you can live your life as praise to God, as praise to Jesus for all the things he has done for us, including paying the punishment for our sins. God bless you and have a nice week. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord.